Welcome back everyone to Caleb the Video Maker 2! This video we are going to be talking about the insert statement. So this is a very good milestone in SQL. We've talked about all the create table garbage and now we're moving on to putting data into those tables. Now what are we going to do with all of this junk though? We want to keep that so what I want to do is save it as a script. So you can click file and save it. I obviously already saved it as animal dating site which that works fine for me. <laughs> now I'm going to actually create a new script by clicking new query and then I'm going to save that. This will allow us to have a level of separation from the stuff we use to create the tables and then the stuff we use to insert data into those tables. So the insert statement, as you may have guessed, it starts with insert. <laughs> and then we have to say into and then put the table we want to insert data into. Now before I start typing stuff in here, we need to figure out what table is the most parent of them all. <laughs> so let's go back to our create table statements. You can see in here we are creating the species table first. That's because the other tables are going to reference this table. It works the same way with rows. We need to create the parent rows before we create the child rows. So let's go back to our insert statement. And then we are going to say species because that is the table we need to start with. The next thing you do is use the values keyword and then in parentheses you pass in values. This is going to require you to know what columns are in this table. So the easiest way to do that if you do not have this available is to go into your object explorer and then find that table, species, and then click columns. We have an ID, species, and a friendly name, int, varchar, and varchar. So let's put some data in there. Let's go with one, this, <laughs> and then the friendly name, which will be bunny. Notice that we separate each value by commas. Here's a comma. And here's a comma. So just like when we create tables, we separate columns by commas, the same thing happens when we are inserting data. So to go over these, this is the ID, this is the genus, and this is the species, and this is the friendly name. Now you might look at this and say this is a violation of things being atomic. That's because we are storing the genus and the species inside of one column. But you know, YOLO. Oh, great excuse. Just, just don't say that if you're at a job and they ask you why you did something. Please don't say YOLO. <laughs> Anyways, let's insert this. But wait, I wanted to show you something. You can actually get rid of this one here. And that's because that is the identity column and it will know that we want to automatically generate a value for that row. So let's run this thing. One rows affected is the response. So now we can go into our object explorer find that species table, and then we can right click it. You can see that there's two options, select top 1000 rows and edit top 200 rows. So you can click either one and you can see the data pops up and it automatically generated an ID for us, which is one. So that's pretty cool. <laughs> now let's go back to our query and we will end that with a semicolon. And now this is the perfect time to show you how foreign keys help protect our integrity. Let's try inserting data into the animals table insert into animals, values, and once again we don't need the ID but we do need to know what columns go here. So let's go to our object explorer, click animals, columns, we need an ID, skip that one, we need the name, the species ID, and the contact email. If you want you can dock this so that way you can see it as you're working. So let's go through these. First one is ID which we can skip, the next is the name which we will say is Sally, then we will give it a species ID, which we will say is two. And then finally a contact email, which is going to be this. Now note, strings start and end with a single quote and numbers do not have quotes. Let's run this little section and see what happens. And you can see here, there is an error. The foreign key protects us from inserting invalid data. You can also see here that the constraint name shows up. That is why some people like to name their constraints, so when an error is thrown, they know exactly where to look. So a lesson you can learn from this is to always use foreign keys. Now, what if we want to insert two values at one time? Let's say we want to insert two animals into this table. Let's try that. But first, I'm going to correct this ID so it'll actually let us insert some data. <laughs> but the way you do it is just put a comma after this, and then you can put more data in another set of parentheses. So I'm going to break this down to the next line just so it's a little easier to read. We will say Franklin, and maybe someday we can add a ID for turtles, but for now we'll just use a rabbit. 
There we go. Now we should be able to insert both of these values at one time. Let's execute this, make sure it works. Two rows affected. So you can see that they were actually both inserted. And the way you can see this is by right clicking the animals table and clicking edit top 200 rows. You can see here we have Sally and Franklin and the IDs were automatically generated. Note that the ID of one is not in here. It's perfectly okay to have missing numbers for the IDs or for them to be out of order, as long as they're all unique. So that is all for the insert statement. If you want one last look at it, here it is. Nice and beautiful. <laughs> so thanks guys for watching. In the next video, we will be talking about something even cooler. So thanks guys, I will see you then. Also, be sure to click subscribe and like.